digitized sprites and finishing moves. Yep, this is definitely a fighting game from the 90s. Hey, I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we do a review of Ultra Vortech for the Atari Jaguar. Second Opinion Games Ultra Vortech is a fighting game that came out in 1995. It was developed by Beyond Games and it was published by Atari. Most of its development is pretty much a cred to Mad Max and Mortal Kombat. So there you go. It has some pretty high expectations to live up to as Mortal Kombat was totally awesome. There's no block button like Mortal Kombat had, instead you just hold back the block. However, there are fatalities, or finishing moves of some sort, whatever generic name they call it in this game. And at the end of this video, I will show you all of them. So, you're welcome. In any good fighting game, you need two things. Balanced characters, and moves that you could easily pull off. This game doesn't really have so many balanced characters, but I understand, that's really hard to do, and fighting games to this day are having a hard time pulling that one off. However, moves that you could pull off on command, it does better than any other Jaguar game. Matter of fact, about 80% of the time when I wanted to pull off a move, it worked for me. There's very few exceptions of such moves. Usually the ones that you have to charge by holding back for so many seconds and then trying to perform, those are the ones I have problems with. Most likely because I'm the one rushing them though. And each of the many characters in this game does have a wide range of moves. Take Vorkana here, or whatever her name is, the girl in red. She has like eight moves to her repertoire. Basically, I only need to use one or two of them to take down anyone. As a matter of fact, I could even finish the end boss of the game on super hard by just spamming one move. Double flawless victory, by the way. Then you have other characters, like this rock monster. One of his most devastating moves is turning into a rock in midair and attacking. But essentially, it just takes the place of a jump kick. It's really kind of pointless, and it's his best move. All of his other moves are completely pointless and I don't even bother with them. The Mercury character has two moves that serve the same function and act the same way. This is kind of ridiculous as well. However, who am I to judge because they decide to give him an extra move? Now most of the moves in this game are easy to pull off and I gotta give the developers credit here. Whether you're playing with the Pro Controller or the Standard Controller, you're on completely even ground. Obviously, this game was made for the Jaguar and really takes advantage of this. Most of the moves in the game are pulled off by two to three button presses total. Even some of the fatalities are as simple as down forward A. That is pretty astounding for the time because fighting games were becoming more and more complicated. Some of the most powerful moves in the game are just pressing two buttons at the same time, like down and punch. This is pretty amazing overall that the moves then pull off so fast and so flawlessly and also very simplistic as well because no one wants to spend hours of their life learning to play Jaguar fighting games. Now there is something that I love about this game more than any other Jaguar fighting game or any other fighting game that I've ever played my entire life and that is the backgrounds. They are absolutely gorgeous and full of detail. I love the overall art design here. It is unbelievable how creepy and goth it is. And I really like this one scene here where they basically use the girl in red model to try on a different outfit and she's a model in the background now. That's pretty hilarious as well. And a lot of these stages, at least three of them, have pit fatalities that are as simple as doing a standard uppercut which is something we haven't seen since Mortal Kombat 1, and I'm thankful that they returned to this. It makes people that don't even want to take the time to learn the finishing moves still be able to do something. And honestly, that's a terrific thing. The sound effects and music? Well, the music's all 
pretty fair, and the sound effects mostly are good. Mercury makes a weird squishy sound that isn't very pleasant, and there is a poop fatality that you see at the end with a bunch of fart noises in there as well, because you can't have a 90s game without fart noises. Playing the tournament mode isn't so bad either. Basically, you have a total of 12 fights. I think you have 9 normal one-on-one -on -one fights, and there is lots of special characters and hidden stages if you could look up the codes and whatnot to find them. Then you fight some shadow warriors, and these are sort of like two people in one. You fight one shadow warrior, another one appears, you fight him. Then you do it again, but you only really have to do it for one round, and when you win, you win. That's pretty nice. Then it goes to a weird Shadow Warrior thing that's super, super easy. Basically, every time you land a hit, he turns into a different guy. And just keep on landing hits, and before you know it, he's dead. Also, one round. Then you go to the final boss of the game, who feels really, really cheap at first, but eventually you start to figure out how you can take him out pretty easy. This guy cannot jump, and I know this because you could actually take his form and play through the whole game and beat it as him. Though there is no ending, well, proper ending, when you do beat the game in this form. I do want to touch on the hit detection quick while I'm sort of there. And that is, sometimes it's kind of funny. It does take away the damage when you get hit with perfect hit detection. However, it's not like other fighting games. Say I'm jump kicking in the air and a fireball hits me. In most fighting games, you fall down and go back. Here, you basically have the audio cue that you got hit and you see your life drain, but you continue going forward with the jump kick. I'm not sure if this was lazy programming or intentional though. It still feels really good and playing with friends actually feels great. The tournament mode feels great as well. Most of the music and sound effects also really good. The moves are easy and somewhat intuitive to pull off and can be quickly learned. The fatalities, or whatever they're called, are also relatively easily done once you get the hang of what distance you should be at to perform them. Overall, this is a very solid fighting game on the Jaguar, and I was actually blown away by the quality. I've had a lot of people tell me how good this game was, and I really didn't believe them because of all the other fighting games I've played. But honestly, this one's definitely worth it. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. But if you guys also want to get a hold of me, please let me know. I want some comments, and I love to hear from real people. Now, without any further ado, here are every fatality for Ultra Vortex.
Warrior.